Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the morning session. So this morning, uh, first speaker is Alessandro Celli, who will speak about time-time covariance for large passage percolation in a house space. Hey, thank you. Okay, so. Okay. Okay, so the um, the seminar of today is about uh, certain models of last pass percolation in house space geometry and result about uh, their two time covariance. And this is a, a joint work with uh, Patrick Fevari from the University of Bonn. Uh, that is a continuation of a uh, well part of my PhD program. Uh, okay, so the model that we are considering is a uh, Okay, the last pass at percolation that sometimes we abbreviate as LPP. So uh, the model that we consider here is a last pass at percolation on a, in the integer uh, uh, in the first quadrant of the inter integer plane. So we consider a lattice uh, where on each side we have um, we place uh, independent random variables that we label omega j. And we consider an initial uh, point and an end point, and we look for and we look for all the directed paths from these two points O and E that are made of uh, right and up increments. And the quantity that we study is the um, is the last passage time, which is defined as the maximum over all possible directed paths from the point O to the point E. Uh, there are that are of the sum of the random variables visited by the path. So this model has been considered also in a uh, so well in has been heavily studied in the past. For example, it is well known that if you take uh, omega ij to be iid uh, geometrically exponentially distributed, the fluctuation of the last passage time are described by the GOE Tracy GOE Tracy distribution. But it was also considered uh, a different um, a Poissonite version of this model, in the sense that so your randomness is no longer placed on a on a lattice, but it is given by a Poisson point process on the unit square. And then what the path does is try to maximize the number of points that are collected. Um, okay, the model that we are studying in this work is a last pass percolation model in half space. Okay, there is a whatever. Uh, in our space uh, that you can okay that you can describe in two equivalent ways you can either think of a model of last pass percolation in full space but when you take um, the randomness so the the random variables omega ij to be uh, symmetric with respect to the diagonal or you can consider the model in the half quadrant of the integer plane uh, and then you define the randomness in the following way so you have um, independent random variables uh, omega ij in the in the bulk, and you consider uh, uh, independent random variables with the different parameters on the on the diagonal. So in this case, in this work, we studied uh, last pass at percolation with exponential weight. So we take parameter uh, one in the bulk and a parameter alpha or alpha positive in uh, on the diagonal. Um, Okay, so originally the, this model was studied in the context of, um, well, it was previously studied by Beck Reigns and Sasamoti Mamura in the context of uh, Hermesley last pass at percolation in half space, which is basically the, the Poissonized version of, uh, of the last pass at percolation and, and that has connection with the um, uh, longest included subsequences in uh, random involution. And then, uh, and they obtained the, well, um, the, the limit distribution for the, for the scale the last passage time. And later they reformulated the, the same result for um, an LP, a symmetrized LPP in full space with geometric weights. Uh, but okay, here we're, so the, the same result were, were obtained later by Beck, Barakan, Colby and Sudan for, the, for this exact model, so with exponential weight. And what was proved in these three, well, in these four papers is that if you look at the last passage time under different scaling, well, last passage time for the point on the diagonal, so the path up to here, um, 
if you consider the fluctuation of this quantity under different scaling, you will observe, um, well, the, the, the behavior of the limit distribution is, uh, depends on the interplay between the randomness in the bulk and the randomness on the diagonal. So in the limit, you will uh, obtain um, a distribution that interpolates between different random metrics uh, distribution. So for the case of um, uh, alpha greater than one half, you will observe the, the GSC Tracy Widom distribution for alpha equals one half. Uh, the limit, uh, the fluctuation are described in the limit by the GOE Tracy Widom, while for alpha less than one half, you will observe, uh, well, under the square root of n uh, scaling, you will observe Gaussian fluctuations. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry. Okay, so um, here we consider two models of last pass speculation. So what we call a point-to-point, -point, uh, what's Okay, sorry. What we call a point-to-point last-passage percolation, which is defined with um, uh, with, a, with a randomness that is defined in the following uh, following way. So we take the first line, uh, first horizontal line, to be identically zero, and so the reason is that we have to compare this model with a different model. So this is uh, well, quite co it's convenient to define. The, random, the, the first line to be zero. And then we take, um, in the bulk, we take uh, random variables that are exponentially distributed of parameter one. And on the diagonal, we choose a parameter rho between zero and one. The second model that we consider is uh, the stationary last passage percolation. And here you see why we defined uh, in the previous model to have a, a line uh, with uh, first line to have to be identically zero, because here we change the randomness. So we, okay, on the on the diagonal we have the same kind of randomness, and the same happens in the bulk. But here we are adding an extra boundary condition to the model. So on the horizontal, um, so on the horizontal line we put uh, exponentially distributed random variables of parameter one minus rho, but we leave the origin to be identically zero. Uh, so this is one of the possible, well, this is not the only uh, stationary LPP model that you can define, but in this context, it's quite convenient because uh, if you consider this model and you look at the increments of the last passage time along the vertical or the, uh, or the horizontal direction, you will have stationary increments. So this means that if you look at the increment for, of the last passage time, for example, between these two points, this will be uh, distributed as a random as a, with an exponential distribution of parameter one minus rho. While if you look at the increments of the last passage time between these two points, uh, this will be an exponentially distributed random variables of parameter rho. And this happens for all the rows and all the columns. Um, well, and the reason why we, so, um, the reason why we study this model is because if you look at the connection between this model and the totally asymmetric simple exclusion process, then in the TASA picture, you, uh, this, corresponds, this configuration corresponds to having a, um, a so the, the occupation variables distributed as a Bernoulli random variables of parameter rho for all the density of particles. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah, it is quite easy. It's uh, both in full space and in uh, half space. Uh, you just have to look, well to look at the Laplace transform of the of the increments, and it's not that hard. This is a uh, well in uh, in full space. It's a uh, work by Balas Kadar and Balas Kadar and Sepalainen in the full space, and it's mm, almost identical to generalize it to the half space. Uh, okay, so for these two models, we, know we have some results regarding the scaling limits. So what we are considering here are two last passage percolations with endpoint given by Q1 and Q tau, where, okay, um, these points are, okay, if you look along the diagonal, they would be a distance tau n and n from the origin along the diagonal. So you should think of tau to be uh, the macroscopic time variable. And then we take the points 
a distance uh, m tower m1 times n to the 2 over 3. Uh, why we choose this scaling? Because this is the typical uh, scaling of space correlation for models in the Cardar Partizan University class. And so, so, okay, so if you look at the, uh, so changing the value of the endpoint along the diagonal me, corresponds to looking at the process in at different times, while if you change the value of m, I, m1 and m tau, you are looking at the process in space. And here we scale m1 and m tau um, in, uh, in the variable uh, 1 minus tau, so we choose m tau to be 1 minus tau to the 2 over 3 times a constant m, m tau tilde. And we know regarding these two models that if you look at the, um, at the rescaled process, for example, for the point-to-point -point LPP, which is the model that was, uh, whose fluctuation have been has been studied by Beck, Barakan, Korgu, and Sudan, they proved that in finite dimensional distribution, the rescaled process, well, under the cube root of n scaling, converges to a, well, uh, a, okay, a, a well-defined process, which is, uh, I will not say what that is, it's just a, a point process that is given as marginal of a certain Fafian Schur process. Uh, this, you can think of this as the half space generalization of the 82 process, which is the limit process for the last pass at per, point to point last pass at percolation in half space, and in general for any model in the KPZ class with a droplet initial condition. While for the, um, if you consider the stationary LPP uh, under the same scaling, um, in a recent work with Dan and Patrick Ferrari, we proved that this model converges in a finite dimensional distribution to this half space AD stationary model, which is a new family, new one parameter family of distribution that depends on the, on, on the parameter delta, which is the, the limiting weight of the, of the randomness at the boundary. So we are taking rho to be uh, one half plus alpha, and then we take alpha to scale as a delta over cube root of n. And then the, the limit distribution will depend on the value uh, delta. Okay. Uh, okay, so the, the object of interest is the time covariant, the two time covariant for, the, for uh, the last passage time. Well, I recall that the time is given by uh, tau, the parameter tau. Uh, okay, first of all, you observe that the, um, we can express the covariance of two random variables in this form, so in form of the variances of the two random variables and the variance of the difference of the two random variables. Uh, and this is the object that we will uh, study more in details. So regarding the time time the two time covariance, there are uh, a a few, res a few results that have been obtained in the last few years regarding the covariance in, uh, in full space. So, for example, uh, from the analytic side, analytical side, you can, um, it was to mention the, the work of uh, Johansson on the two-time distribution for the geometric LPP, where they proved that it, uh, the two-time uh, covariance converged to a contour integral of a freedom determinant. And then this result was later generalized by Johansson and Raman, considering the multi-time distribution. Uh, there is also a work by Beck and Liu about the multi-time distribution for the periodic TASEP. That should correspond to a peri mo uh, model of periodic LPP. Um, and then there are interesting results that actually motivated most of the, the works that, well, also the work that I I'm uh, presenting. On, there are experimental results made on uh, turbulent liquid crystals and numerical simulations. The most important are the, the, the results obtained by Takeo Shansano in 2012 and, um, and following work by Denardis, Redusal, and Takeuchi. Uh, that were, so the, the work by Takeo Shansano was the um, inspiration for the um, a work by Ferdinand Spohn, where they present some conjectures and heuristic arguments on the behavior of the two-time covariance when you consider times to be close or far from each other. So in the limit for the tau goes to, uh, going to one, when the times are close, or tau going to zero. 
and they consider, uh, they make some heuristic arguments about the behavior of the of the two time covariance and the transition to and the crossover, the transition of the well of this term to the stationary to the variance of the stationary model, considering uh, last pass and percolation models with ending point on the diagonal, ending points on the diagonal, and uh, with uh, well, the three typical configuration of a uh, last pass percolation. So the point to point, uh, the line to point, or the, the stationary last pass percolation. This, of course, in full space. Um, well, okay, the, the works of, so the conjecture of um, Pedan and Spona agree with the, the result obtained by uh, Takeuchi and Sano on the, by the experiment by Takeuchi and Sano. I think it was to spend a minute to just comment what they, they observe. So um, what, they, what they study was, a, well, I don't know if it makes a lot of sense, but it's a, um, so they consider a, um, a certain type of uh, liquid crystal that present a phenomenon of uh, topological uh, defect turbulence. And so you should imagine that uh, you observe the formation of a, of an interface that is due to, uh, okay, formation of two uh, phases. So there is a stable phase that propagates in, uh, in a, into a metastable phase. And what they studied is the interface between these two phases. Um, so they consider configuration where you can, ha you have a, so uh, a circular interface and a flat interface that was corresponds to in terms of LPP, you can think of the, this would be the point-to-point -point LPP, and this would be a line-to-point LPP. And what they did is was they measured the, um, the covariance of the height function. Uh, well, the height function would be the, the interface uh, at different times. And what they observe is that the behavior of the covariance um, strongly depend on the geometry of the system that you're considering. Uh, so, for example, in the case, what you can see that in the, um, if you look at the uh, droplet uh, initial, if you consider a model with droplet initial condition, you observe a persistent of memory. So, uh, the fluctuation of the height function will, um, well, will keep the memory of the, of the fluctuation at time, uh, at the initial time. And you can see this from the fact that the covariance at two times stays positive also for larger times. While if you consider instead model with a flat geometry, the, this, will, this will not hold anymore, and you, you will see that the covariance, the two-time covariance, will go to zero by, for large times. Um, okay, and these results were uh, confirmed and then uh, generalized also uh, in the droplet case by the work of uh, Denard, Ledusal, and Takeuchi, where they gave some well, it's also confirmed by a numerical simulation on the hidden model, but they, what they uh, measured is actually, so they, they gave a quantitative prediction of the, trans, the, the crossover of the um, height difference. So you take the, you consider the difference of the height function at time t and time zero. Uh, so the crossover of the, of the difference of the increments of the height function to the stationary, uh, to the stationary model, to the station, yeah, to the stationary state, when uh, t over t zero uh, goes to one. Okay, so uh, motivated by this, uh, this experiment and the conjecture by Ferrari Spoon, so in uh, full space we we obtain uh, results regarding the universal behavior of the two time covariance for macroscopically close time, so for tau goes, going to one. Um, so what we, so we consider uh, last pass at percolation models um, with ending points away from the diagonal. So in an entry that's over three region around the diagonal and with, a, in a, with very general initial conditions. So we, we could cover both uh, the point to point LPP, the line to point LPP the stationary case, but also uh, and last pass speculation starting from a random collection of points, and so a non-stationary with a non-stationary randomness. And what we show is that, so, well, the, um, the 
in the limit for large time, you can, so when the, uh, the times are, the two times are close to each other, so in the limit for tau into one, you can approximate the variance of the, of the increments of the last passage time for any of the, of these settings, but the variance of the stationary state. So this is a, uh, C stationary is a random variables that is distributed according to the back range distribution which is the, the limit distribution of, for, uh, for models in the KBZ class starting from stationary initial conditions. And then we have an error term, which is uh, well behaving for the limit tau going to one. And so what we did in a recent work was to generalize the result uh, to, um, to the half space model. And the main result that we obtain are two. So the first one is about the stationary LPP. So, and in this case, we can actually obtain an exact formula for the, for the, two, for the covariance at two times for the stationary LPP, but only if we consider endpoints on the diagonal. So there, is a, so there are some strong differences between modeling full space and half space. And well, the main result is the influence of the diagonal. Um, so, but the, the problem why we cannot consider the, okay, okay, first of all, okay, what we can, so we can express the limit of the covariance of two last passage, of the last passage time at time uh, n and time tau n in terms of the variances of this um, a, half space AD stationary processes. Um, but okay, so to obtain this result, we need to, um, to derive a variational formula for this AD stationary process. Uh, so we can, we can express, um, okay, for in full space, this, uh, this identity is, was already known, but you can generalize it also to the half space case. So you can express the, the AD, half space AD stationary process as the maximum for a positive parameter of the sum of two processes. So you have a standard Bernian motion with a drift and the, well, the, this AD point to point process in uh, half space, the, the generalization of the AD2 process uh, that I mentioned, well, that appeared in the work of Beck, Balakan, Colby and Sudan. Well, and the problem why we cannot generalize to the to, for, to points not on the diagonal is that, well, um, this process is defined only for endpoints on the diagonal. So this gives like a, a first difference with the with the result in uh, in the um, in the full space. In full space, we could we could obtain all the formulas for uh, any ending point. So as long as you are uh, in a in a region close to the diagonal, you can you can define all this formula for all the all the initial conditions. And the second result uh, is about the point-to-point -point last passage percolation. So we are still considering uh, times close to each other. So tau going to one. Uh, and what we can prove is that, so we have, we show a universal behavior of the, of the variance of the increments of the last passage time in the limit for n going to infinity. So what we show is that you can approximate the variance of the increments of the point-to-point -point last passage time by the variance of the increments of the stationary, uh, of the stationary model. Um, so this would be a point-to-point -point, uh, LPP with weights of parameter rho on the diagonal, and this would be a stationary LPP with weights rho on the diagonal, one minus rho on the, on the horizontal line. Uh, so, and this is true up to an error term, which is uh, of order one minus tau to the one minus theta for theta between zero and one third. Uh, so it is bounded for the tau going to one. Oh, okay, so this result actually holds when you consider uh, one of the two LPP to have a point on the diagonal. Uh, it is actually possible to generalize to any point, but the error estimate that you get is not uh, it's worse than this one. So, and so I will just discuss this case for, uh, 
uh, uh, for the LPP at a shorter time to be on the diagonal. Uh, so as a consequence of this result, um, if you consider both the LPP to have ending points on the diagonal, um, you can obtain a formula for the, for the covariance of the last passage time in terms of the, okay, so here you have the variances of the uh, house space 82 process, let's call it like this. And then here you have the same, an analogous term that you observed in, the, in full space. So you have the, the variance of the house space 80 stationary process plus uh, an error term depending on the one minus tau. Uh, well, the reason why we can obtain this formula only for points of the diagonal is the same reason why we could not generalize what happened? this formula for any ending end point because the, 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 the half space 82 process is well defined only for an, if you consider an end point on the diagonal. So you cannot prove convergence of the variances of the LPP to the variance of, the, of, the, of this process. Okay, so the, to prove this result, we actually need to, uh, well, of course, we need to compare the, the increments of the last passage percolation, the last passage percolation with, in the point-to-point -point setting with the LPP with the stationary in the stationary setting. And here, this, well, the situation is a bit more, is, well, quite more complicated than in full space. Uh, so what you, what you do in, what happens in full space is that you can obtain uh, um, inequalities between the increments of the last pass, of the point-to-point -point LPP and the stationary LPP with different um, densities. Uh, with a simple coupling. Uh, because, so, because the, so, if you think of, well, if you look at the full space setting, so if you have um, here parameter one minus rho and rho, what the geodesic for the full, in the, in full space does is it will collect some randomness here or here, so on the horizontal or the vertical direction, and then it will enter the bulk and we go to the end point. Um, this doesn't happen in uh, half space, so in half space, the, the geodesic can collect some randomness on the horizontal line, but it doesn't exclude the fact that you can also pick some random variables on the diagonal, so it could uh, make this. Uh, so the comparison with the point-to-point -point LPP is more complicated and you need some uh, condition on the, well, you need a different coupling and you need some condition on the, um, on the probability that your path does not intersect the diagonal. Uh, so, but this is, oh, well, proving that the, the, the geodesic doesn't intersect the diagonal away from the diagonal would be possible only if I consider an end point which is very far from the diagonal. Uh, but this gives some problem because then you would, you would fall into the full space setting. So what we... Um, okay, so for the... So we can, we can obtain bounds on the, on the increments of the LPP in two different situations. So if you take... A rope, if you consider a, a stationary model with the parameters rho plus, rho plus greater or equal than rho, which is the parameter of the point-to-point -point LPP, uh, you can obtain this upper bound for the point-to-point -point LPP in terms of the, sta the stationary LPP increments. Um, and this, so this condition is enough because if rho plus is greater than rho, then the randomness on the diagonal is for the stationary model is weaker than the randomness of the point-to-point -point model, while the randomness on the horizontal line will be stronger than the one for the point to point, because in the point to point it's simply zero. So you know that the geodesic for the stationary model is always to the right of the, to the geodesic for the point to point model. And this will guarantee that if you take uh, the LPP to the point uh, Q, uh, P and the LPP to the point Q, that they will have an intersection. 
And after the intersection, you, will, uh, you, will, you can compare the, the LPPs since they will, uh, they, will, well, they will have the same randomness. So the, the geodesic for the stationary model does not touch the diagonal. Well, this, this, this is not true if you consider uh, if you want to find a lower bound. So now we take rho minus to be less than rho. Um, so we have one half plus delta minus kappa over cube root of n. So in this case, uh, the randomness on the, on, the, on the diagonal for the stationary LPP will be stronger than the randomness for the for the point-to-point -point LPP, but it will also be stronger on the horizontal line. Uh, so uh, you have to, to, have, to have a lower bound in terms of the stationary model. You need to impose uh, a condition on the, on the crossing between the uh, stationary uh, geodesic and the point-to-point -point geodesic in the bulk so that you can compare the increments after the intersection point. So what you need is uh, to show that uh, this, uh, this path uh, will uh, intersect with very high probability in the bulk. Um, and it is possible actually to show that the, the probability of the complementary event so that the path will not intersect will go to zero well, as e to the minus kappa minus delta cube. Uh, okay, so another result that we need to show the the result of our, the the covariance. Yes. What? Well. I try to understand what is your uh, event uh, crossing event omega cross. So, so would you have a picture of? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, a picture uh, of this. B, B is so your bulk. And, uh, so the it will be the. Uh, so P is to the left, of, so this will be P and Q. So you are taking a pi rho minus to Q. Uh, well, imagine that you do, this will be pi rho minus, and this will be the point to point. Uh, so what you want is that the path will intersect at some point in the bulk, uh, and then after this point, they will share the same randomness so that you can compare the increments of these two processes. Uh, well, actually, to estimate this event, it is enough simply to show that the geodesic for the stationary model touches at some point, in one point in the diagonal. This is enough. Because if it touches the diagonal, it has to cross the geodesic for the point-to-point -point model. Um, OK. so. Um, okay, to show the, the result for the covariance, we actually need, well, to have an estimate on the variance of the difference of the LPP, you also need a result about the, the localization of the geodesic. Uh, so what you, um, well, why we, do we need this? So what you expect from the, from the increments of the LPP is that so the local behavior of the of the of the variance should be this should be uh, described by the stationary state, but this will hold only if you look at the uh, small scale. Uh, so if the if the geodesic goes too far from the diagonal, uh, you will not have the, you will not be anymore in this situation. So what you need to show is that uh, the geodesic for the point-to-point -point, uh, last pass percolation is uh, localized in a region of order n to the 2 over 3 around the diagonal. Uh, so, and you can prove this by showing the localization at a fixed time. So, okay, just to recall, we are considering an LPP to a point Q1, which is a distance n from the origin uh, and a distance uh, n to the 2 over 3 from the diagonal. And what you do is you decompose the, the LPP. Well, okay, you choose an uh, uh, intermediate point, I of u, which is a distance tau n from 0, uh, and a distance u to n to the 2 over 3. 
and you show that this uh, this point cannot be um, cannot go farther than uh, a certain threshold, a certain distance from the from the diagonal. Um, so and actually you can show that the so if you define this line so LM you can show that the point geodesic of the point to point LPP this should be Q1. Uh, so the probability that the this geodesic uh, crosses the this line uh, goes to zero as uh, well super exponentially in M. Um, well to well. Okay, the, also proving the localization of the geodesic uh, creates some problem in uh, half space because what you do in full space is basically it is enough to have the the comparison between the uh, the point to point and the stationary model uh, because basically you can you know the law of the so the reason why you need this this bound is that you know exactly the law of the increments by stationarity so and this is enough to have a good you so this is enough to have a good bound on the on the localiza on the on the localization uh, by simply using estimates on uh, increments of Brownian motions. But here it's a uh, well. Uh, we have uh, two problems. So the first one is that okay, um, it is not clear how to couple the point-to-point -point and the stationary models because of the of the problem with the randomness on the diagonal. Um, and then uh, we also have the problem that we don't have another key input in the in the proof of in full spaces are the uh, tail estimates on the distribution of the point to point and the stationary LPP, which we don't have in this case because the point to point process is not defining all the for all um, ending points. So we have to consider different models. Uh, so what we can do, for example, is to well, we know that the geodesic for the point-to-point -point LPP is always to the left of the geodesic for the stationary LPP. And then uh, if you, you can bound the geodesic in the stationary case by the with the geodesic of another model, uh, which I modify the stationary model where you take... Uh, so imagine that anywhere the randomness is the same as in the stationary model, but in this region, uh, you impose that uh, the random variables are zero. So from the, this point, from the point i u to q1, the geodesic will be to the right of the geodesic of the stationary model. And then it is possible to compare between i u and q1 the LPP uh, with the full space model. Um, Okay, so uh, this is what we want to, so now we explain, if I think I have time. Uh, yeah, five minutes. <laughs> well, uh, let's see briefly how we, we prove the results. So I recall that we are taking rho to be one half plus uh, alpha for alpha scaling as one over cube root of n. And we are considering the end point for the LPP, uh, for the LPP at a shorter time on the diagonal. And then we want to prove this formula so that we can approximate the variance of the point-to-point -point LPP increments with the variance of the stationary LPP. Well, first of all, just an observation: you can uh, you can estimate the 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 variance of the of the stationary increments. Uh, so this is of order one minus tau to the two over three. So you can see that this is a good adult bound because it's of order one minus tau. Well, cube root of one minus tau smaller than the value of the variance. So this is a, a good error bound. And then what, okay, uh, first, first thing to do is to, okay, let's call the, this term, the increments of the point-to-point -point LPP xn. Uh, so you can, um, the first thing to do is to decompose the LPP uh, to the point and uh, to the point at the lo uh, largest, largest time uh, in this way. So we are. Uh, okay, this is uh, Q1. This is Q tau, which is also tau n one one. So 
if this is your geodesic, so you decompose the, the path as a point-to-point -point LPP from the origin to the point IU, plus an LPP from the point IU to the point Q1. So if you look at the increments, so if you look at XN, then you have this variational formula. So you have this variational formula where you take the maximum over U. Okay, the sum of this supported is exactly the decomposition of the LPP minus the, the, um, the last passage time at, up to the point uh, Q tau. And this will be, uh, well, this L rho is the rescaled point to point between IU and Q1 with a parameter rho on the diagonal. And you can do the same for the, for the stationary model. So define epsilon rho n as the increments of the last passage time. And you can obtain the same, um, the same uh, formulation. Here you will just have a L stationary rho, L stationary rho. And here you will still have a point to point LPP with the parameter rho on the diagonal. OK, so if you use this notation, what we have to estimate is this, the variance of xn minus the variance of y rho n. So the first step to do this is the localization. So um, let's define x and m and x and m complementary. So we have exactly the same formula as before with the decomposition of the last passage time. But here we're taking the maximum for u in a finite interval 0m. And here we're considering the maximum for u greater than, than m. So we expect the, the last passage time to be given by this random variable. Because, we have, because of the localization. And we do the same for the stationary LPP. Well, of course, the last passage time uh, is a maximum. So it, it, is the max, it is given by the maximum of, the, of this two random variable. So whether you take the maximum of ever in, in 0m or the maximum for u greater than m. And what we, have, what we prove is that, uh, what we need to show is that the, the contribution given by uh, the localization, so the, the so if we take if we take the variance of the localized process, then the difference between the uh, full process and the localized process is small. Um, so the 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 error term that you obtain from localizing the process in the interval zero m is goes to zero fast enough in M. And to prove this, you have, uh, well, you need, okay, of course we need the, uh, well, to prove that the error term is small, um, of course you need to use the, the, the bounds on the localization of the geodesic. So um, the, the error term will depend both on the, on, the, on the probability of this event, so that the, well, the, full the that the um, LPP obtained by lo by maximizing in zero M is smaller than the LPP maximizing for you greater than M. Uh, but this is this is uh, well bounded by the localization result that I introduced before. So we know that the path doesn't go too far from the from the from the diagonal. So this can this cannot uh, happen with hyper with uh, reasonable probability. And then the other term, uh, the other ingredient are the, well, tail estimate. So uh, we need to estimate also the distribution of this, the localized process. Uh, and for this, you have to, well, use some comparison with other models. So first of all, okay, this is given by the maximum of the sum of three processes. Well, this is of course greater than any uh, then the sum of these processes at any point that doesn't maximize the, this process. So you can take u to be zero and then you can bound it from below by the sum of these processes. And it is possible to show that all these rescaled processes have uh, at least uh, exponential and uh, exponential tails. Okay, the, the second step is the comparison with the, with the stationary model. So we know the for which we know the, the law of the increments. So, okay, uh, we are considering, uh, we are using the, the proposition about the upper and lower bounds for the increments of the LPP 
taking rho plus to be equal to rho, one half plus delta n to the minus one third, and rho minus to be one half plus delta minus, ka minus kappa n to the minus one third. And then we know that this chain of inequalities uh, is true if we have, uh, um, if the event of the crossing event between the geodesic for uh, uh, L rho and the geodesic for the point to point LPP uh, have an intersection in the bulk. Uh, so, what, so if we decompose, so I recall that this is called X and M. Uh, this is uh, y rho m and this is y rho minus m. So we decompose x and m um, on this on the event omega cross and it's complementary. And then, so we have this, we reformulate these uh, inequalities with this new notation. And these uh, inequalities will uh, translate into a, uh, upper and lower bounds on the, on the tails of the distribution of x and m in terms of the tails of uh, y rho and y rho minus and the probabilities of the complementary of the event omega of the crossing event so um, okay now okay we, what we wanted to compare is the x and m with x n with respect to y rho n so uh, we have to find estimates on the on the tails of y rho minus well and this is not particularly easy because well, what you need would be to compare the, the, the stationary models, but this is, well, this is possible, this is uh, possible in the full space since we have a, uh, a good, cap we have a decoupling description, we have a coupling between these two processes, but in hard space, we don't have this description. So we have to find another way to, to compare uh, these distributions. And what we, okay, so first observation is that, okay, we are considering stationary model, so we can always write the increments of the LPP of the last passage time um, as a sum of uh, uh, independent random variables. So this would be, if you have a sum of order n to the two over three terms of uh, xi tilde minus yi tilde, where xi is exponentially distributed of parameter one minus rho and y uh, tilde is exponentially distributed of parameter rho minus. Sorry, here one minus rho minus and rho minus. Uh, this is the consequence of the stationarity so that the law of the increments are stationary. And then you can do the same for the increments of uh, L rho, but now you have a uh, parameter one minus rho and rho. Um, so, well, the cabin that we by the cabin that we chose so that the the randomness on the diagonal for rho minus is greater than the randomness on the diagonal for rho and the randomness on the horizontal line for rho minus is weaker than the randomness on the horizontal line for rho we can bound this different we can have this bound on the on the difference of the random variables so from this we can write the increments for the the stationary lpp with parameter rho minus as the, okay, the increments of the LPP, uh, the stationary LPP with parameter rho plus a rest. Uh, we should notice that these two terms are not independent, uh, but uh, it is possible to overcome this problem when estimating uh, uh, these increments because the, the rest uh, goes to zero when you take n going to infinity. And this rest is given by a, a sum of, uh, well, in some of uh, these pi and qi random variables, which are independent and they are explicit. So it is possible to estimate this term by estimates of random works. Uh, and then, okay, the, oh, sorry, the last step. Okay, uh, now we can, okay, now we can estimate the, the tails of uh, y rho minus with the tails of uh, y rho. And okay, we, can, we put all the estimates together, the, the error terms coming from the localization, uh, the estimate on the tail of y on minus, and the estimates on the probability of uh, omega crossing, the complementary of omega crossing. And we obtain that the, if we choose kappa 
to be uh, the function of uh, 1 minus tau, so 1 over 1 minus tau to the theta over 2, for theta between 0 and 1 half. We can estimate the, diff the distance between the variances of xn and y rho n as uh, 1 minus tau to the 2 over 3 minus theta times the uh, expected values of y uh, of the stationary increments. And since we know that the stationary increments will converge to the well, they converge to 1 minus tau, cube root of 1 minus tau, the half space area stationary process. So this is terms of order cube root of 1 minus tau. And we have concluded the, the estimate. Okay, I think I went over time.